Hello everyone. Hyper-V is a Microsoft virtualization platform that helps to create and manage virtual machines. Actually, I was planning to create a video on Azure Migrate and was going to mimic the on-prem environment into the Azure using the Hyper-V. So I thought that's a good opportunity to create a new video where I can show how to install Hyper-V on Windows 2022 server and then run a guest operating system on it. So in this video, I'll show the step-by-step -step deployment in the lab. I'm logged into Azure portal now and let's go to the virtual machines and create a new virtual machine. I'll create a new resource group with the name RG on-prem. And the name of the virtual machine will be Hyper VM01. I'll let Azure decide the availability zone for me. Now there are two important considerations while deploying Hyper-V on virtual machine. First one is that the virtual machine SKU should support nested virtualization. And the another one is that the security type should be standard, not the trusted launch virtual machines. Let's select the security type as standard. And I'll choose the image as Windows Server 2022 data center. Now to decide the size, let's quickly check D series Azure VM nested virtualization. So go to D series and if you'll see here, nested virtualization is supported and what I want to use is at least 8 CPUs and 32 GB of memory. So I'll use the size D8D V5. So let's select this virtual machine. D8D V5. Perfect. Let's select this. I'll provide the username and password. Because I have to log into this virtual machine and I'm not going to use Azure best in. So I'll deploy the public IP address where 3389 will be allowed, which is RDB port. For now, I'm not going to deploy any data disk. OS disk should be sufficient. Let's go to networking. I have to create a new VNet. So let's create a VNet on prem VNet. I think slash 20 should be enough, which is 4000 IP addresses. And let's name it as app subnet. And instead of 20, I'll provide it as 24, which will be 256 IP addresses. And that should be sufficient for this lab. I am choosing the public IP so that using the public IP, I can log into this virtual machine. And in the network security group, 3389 port will be allowed for inbound connectivity. Go to the management. It's good to leave it enabled because if I left this virtual machine, it will be auto shut down. But for now, I'll disable this. Monitoring. By default, the boot diagnostics will use the managed storage account which will be managed by Microsoft. So I'll just leave it as enabled. Nothing else, review and create. It's doing the final validation and validation is passed and let's create it. The deployment has started and I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the deployment is completed. Deployment is complete now and virtual machine is created. So let's go to the virtual machine. Hyper VM01 is created with a public IP address and it's a Windows 2022 data center server. Let's go to the network settings. If you scroll down to NSG, there is one rule which allows port 3389 to be connected from anywhere. But I don't want anyone else to connect to my virtual machine. I just want to whitelist my IP address. 
so let's click on my ip address just pick up my ip address and save so now according to this rule only my ip address is allowed to rdp into this virtual machine so that's all good let's go back and copy the public ip address let's open rdp and let's create a connection I have to provide username and password. Select yes. And it's creating a connection. And perfect, I'm able to log in now. So let's wait for a minute or two so that all the initial startup configuration is done. And then we'll start with the next step. The loading bar from the server manager is gone and it's showing the roles and the server groups. So the server is ready now, all the startup config is done. So we can proceed to make changes. Click on the local server and it's showing the computer name. Right now, this virtual machine is not connected to any domain. So let's go back to the dashboard. There is an option of add roles and features. Let's click here. So what we are going to do here is enable the nested virtualization, which is Hyper-V. So next, role-based features. This is the virtual machine where we are making these changes. And let's select Hyper-V. And as soon as we select Hyper-V, there are sub features like GUI management tools, as well as the Hyper-V module for Windows PowerShell. So these are the management tools for Hyper-V and those will also be installed. Click on add features and perfect. It has loaded. Next, I'm not making changes here. Next, next. So there are two different virtual switches. So in the Hyper-V, there will be two different virtual switches. One is for Hyper-V network adapter and another one for Ethernet 2, which is virtual adapter. So use the basic security credentials. And I can change the location of the hard drive files, but let's leave it by default and install. And the feature installation has started. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the Hyper-V and it, all the sub features are installed. Now the feature installation is complete, but this requires a restart of the virtual machine. So let's close this. And you can see Hyper-V is installed. So it's showing as restart pending. So let's restart this virtual machine. Let's wait for a minute or so, and then I'll try to connect again. So it's asking for password. That means the server is ready. I'm logged into the server now and in the server manager, I'll be able to see Hyper-V effect. So let's wait for the initial startup config to finish and in the roles and the server group, it should show the roles and the Hyper-V here. And here you can see Hyper-V. So let's click here. hyper VM is started. So now let's go to the tools and go to the Hyper-V manager. And using this Hyper-V manager, you can create and manage the virtual machines. Click on Hyper-VM and right click on it and create a new virtual machine. So let's name this virtual machine as on-prem-vm-01. So there are two options of generation one and generation two. Generation one supports the older virtual machines also like 32 bit and 64 bit both. However, in the case of the generation two, it supports the latest virtual machine with UEFI based firmware and 64 bit operating system only. So we'll install the Windows 22 server, which is 64 bit. So we can use the generation two. And I'll provide it as four 
थाउजेंड एम बी फोर जी बी ऑफ रैम बट इफ यूल सी हियर देर इज नो नेटवर्क कनेक्शन अवेलेबल सो वी नीड ए वर्चुअल स्विच टू बी क्रिएटेड यूजिंग विच ऑल द वर्चुअल मशीन दे कैन कनेक्ट विद ईच अदर विद इन दिस हाइपर वी एनवायरमेंट एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कनेक्ट दीज वर्चुअल मशीन विद द फिजिकल सर्वर और और द सर्वर वेयर द हाइपर वी इज इंस्टॉल सो दैट दे कैन कनेक्ट टू द इंटरनेट इन दैट केस आई नीड टू क्रिएट एन एक्सटर्नल वर्चुअल स्विच सो लेट्स कैंसल दिस एंड ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड यू कैन सी देर इज अ वर्चुअल स्विच मैनेजर क्लिक ऑन वर्चुअल स्विच मैनेजर देर आर ऑप्शन एक्सटर्नल इंटरनल एंड प्राइवेट एक्सटर्नल इज फॉर एक्सटर्नल कनेक्टिविटी सो दैट इट कैन कनेक्ट टू इंटरनेट थ्रू द सर्वर वेयर हाइपर वी इज इंस्टॉल्ड another one is internal so, so that the virtual machines within the hyper we can connect to each other and, and the private is then it will be an isolated virtual machine so let's create an external virtual switch let's name it as external switch and okay this will restart the network configuration on the main server which is a hyper vm server and i'll get disconnected and reconnect again so as you can see the connection is lost but soon it will connect again because it just a network restart so i'm back online i'm logged into the server now and if i'll go to the virtual switch manager Here you can see on the left side, external switch is created. So cancel. Right-click on the Hyper VM zero one and create a new virtual machine. Next, let's name it as on-prem VM zero one. Next, I'll choose the generation two. Four GB of memory. And we have already created the virtual switch, which is external switch. Let's select that. and by default it uses 127 gb of hard disk so let's choose this and i'll install the operating system from the bootable image i have opened the edge browser and looked for windows 2022 data center iso and clicked on the first link itself this is the link and you have to download the 64 bit edition i have already downloaded it so i'll just quickly choose it here it's in downloads next and finish so it's creating the hard disk and soon the virtual machine so the virtual machine is created let's connect to this virtual machine and start it and i am in the hyper v where it will show the installation of the windows server so i'll use the default language and the keyboard language and install so there are multiple versions so i'll choose the data center version with the desktop experience let's select next accept the license terms next and install and custom install so i'll create the single disk next and this will copy all the files and start the installation i'll pause the video and we'll be back once the installation is done so the installation is complete and now operating system will load and then the final configuration has to be done so i have to provide the password and it's finalizing the settings applying the and operating system is ready and for this we can use control alt delete and perfect our operating system is running which is on prem vm 01 it's running on hyper vm 01 itself so now what we have done is we have installed the azure virtual machine on the azure virtual machine we enabled the nested virtualization which is hyper v 
and when we enabled the Hyper-V using the Hyper-V, we created a virtual machine and installed the Windows 2022 data center server on that virtual machine and it's running now. And that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.